This office chair is guaranteed to reduce your back pain, improve posture, and boost productivity, or they'll refund your money. Now, those are some very bold claims from a company called Anthros. And to be honest, when it first arrived in early July 2023 as a final prototype, I didn't actually love it. But more than eight months later and some changes to the chair, I've had a chance to sit in again for 30 days straight, and my experience has changed in a good way, a really good way. Back in March of 2023, I watched Gary V's channel about an office chair that he said had the potential to change the world. Now, Gary V had the Anthros team on his channel and was raving about their newest chair. Of course, I was interested. Eventually, I reached out through their partnership link on the Anthros website and after a short time had heard back from their team. Now, they actually were familiar with the B. Todd brand and even mentioned how useful our content was to their team early on learning about the office seating landscape. Fast forwarding to May of 2023, we actually had scheduled our first call and discussed many things, including their passion to bring a better product to market that could compete with the giants like Herman Miller and Steelcase. After learning some more about their plans with their chair, I really pushed them hard to extend their warranty and create a return policy that was consumer friendly to really compete with these bigger brands. Now, ultimately, Anthros would make their first visit to our office in July of 2023, bringing with them one of the few functional Anthros chair prototypes available. The problem? I didn't love their chair. But about six months later, Anthros would visit our offices again with an updated chair, the chair that we're going to be taking a closer look at today. If you're looking to fast track your search for the most comfortable office chair, check out our office chair comfort cheat sheet linked in the description. After a long first meeting with the owner of Anthros, we were finally able to get a chance to sit in the Anthros chair for the first time. Now, I'll be honest, Steve had really built up the suspense and I was chomping at the bit to sit in his chair. Now, the chair that he had brought to us to try included a four-star base design. Now, this in itself was unique because honestly, we don't see a lot of chairs like this anymore. But the reason he decided to go this route was a problem that he saw with five-star bases and how they got in the way of your feet while seated and also pushing back out of the chair. Now, the only thing is that it created a new problem for me because this chair didn't have the most basic function, swivel. Now, the swivel function is nice for two reasons. One, it allows you just to move around in the chair a bit more, slightly rotating back and forth unconsciously. This is also something you'll do if you're just reaching for things naturally at your desk. Additionally, the space required to back the chair up and turn and get out was really far as the arc because of this design was difficult to make it move. Now, getting the chair to pivot on just the casters is harder than you think. Now, the good news, the second chair that was brought to our office recently included a five-star base. Now, this eliminated that locked-in feeling, and to be honest, I really like this version of a base. This is my preferred version. If you want to compete against the biggest players in the seating space, I think you need to have a product that is built equal to, if not better, than the likes of Herman Miller or Steelcase. We talk a lot about chairs that use that cookie cutter parts off a shelf somewhere in China. The Anthros chair, though, is not that. In fact, this chair is custom from top to bottom. Heck, I think the casters even might be built specifically for this chair. Now, there was a ton of time that went into designing all of the different components throughout the chair. Things like the base, seat pad, and back design were all done to keep you properly supported throughout the day. Just look at the structure of the base. I have a hard time believing this thing could break. Even the armrests that provide the width adjustment under the seat are built so well that when you lock them down, they feel rock solid and don't move around at this connection point like so many other chairs we've tested in the past. The Anthros design might be hit or miss depending on your preference, but the molds of this chair are top-notch throughout, and that shines through as you inspect it, even if you're one to bring out the fine-tooth comb. Some of the key adjustments that I always look for on ergonomic chairs are missing, but not necessarily forgotten, as they just went a different route to accomplish the same or similar goals. Features like seat height are required. Same for armrests that have height, depth, width, and pivot adjustment. Now the width adjustment is done through a locking lever system under the seat that allows some freedom to make them narrower or wider, depending on your body size. For me, I wish they were just a bit more narrow, but that is likely due to the shape of the pad versus the actual width adjustment, which is something we'll cover in the next section. Seat depth though is another feature missing on this chair and one that I would normally miss. But instead of changing the depth of the seat, they've actually moved the backrest to accommodate these same goals. And by utilizing a knee tilt function, they're able to keep that same pivot point behind your knees. Now, depending on your preference for tilt, this may or may not be a good thing. For me, I actually don't mind it. 
Carrying through the build quality, the tilt function is pretty incredible. So many chairs require a ton of turns on their tension knob to either reduce or increase how much effort's required to tilt back in the chair. The Anthros is different. Turn it one full turn, and honestly, you've probably gone too far. I think it's that good, and paired with their knee tilt, I get this tilt tension set, and I don't even use the tilt lock feature unless I'm trying to be locked in an upright position. That floating mid-recline feeling is my go-to, but unfortunately, I can only use it for a portion of my task, and I find myself, again, switching between the upright locked position and this other sort of in-between position. But just beware, if you're really short and light, getting this chair to tilt might be more difficult if you're, say, sub five foot for now. They said they're actually working on a fix for this, but it's yet to be released. Now, the team at Anthros will probably be crazy watching this review because the first thing they want you to do after setting up your height is to get that back dialed in. And while that's true, I had to save it for last. The first prototype that we tried was close to the chair that I'm reviewing now, but that upper backrest portion of the chair didn't quite move enough for me. When you do Ryan's patented Russian twist, I sort of felt locked in. Fortunately, the product model now has more left to right movement, allowing for more freedom for those longer sitting sessions. The upper backrest design, I think really does a good job breaking that bad posture that you see when you roll your shoulders over a long period of time, allowing you more to stretch and counteract that buildup of tension that creates havoc in your shoulders and back after longer periods of sitting time. Finally, the pelvic support, not lumbar support. Anthros is very specific about this and I get it. This is a little different to get used to though. I'll be honest, I'm in good shape. I feel like the other ergonomic chairs in the past have definitely put me in that right position. But adjusting to this feature on the Anthros, it takes a minimum of two to three days. It forces a posture that you haven't experienced before and after a few days of adjusting to it, I can say it's really good. Prior to that, I was tired. My back was tired. I could feel it. Now stay with me though, because the reviews on Anthro's site really show how helpful this product has been to a specific group of people, those with serious neck and back issues. If this is you, Anthro's is likely the route for you, but as always, you still need to consult with your doctor if you're concerned. The armrest on the Anthro's chair could be a hit or miss for you right now, depending on how they fit and your preference for the shape of the pad. Now the squish factor on the final products pad is really good. You can lean into them and they have plenty of give with no real hard edges, but that rounded shape on the pad is not my personal favorite. I find myself sort of slipping off the pad and for me, a bigger surface area would improve this quite a bit. Now one of the coolest things I think about the team at Anthro's is their willingness to listen to our suggestions. While there might be some pushback at first, they do want to create something that's great, and this is a key area that they are currently working on for improvement. At the time of review, I was told that they have actually found a new US source to make sample pads to try and hopefully solve the shape of the pad problem for those like me who just want a better overall fit. Backrest comfort and seat comfort are two areas that Anthros really wanted to dial in for that support and comfort factor. Now we'll cover the backrest first because that appears to be where most of the thought went into building this chair. Once you get the lower and upper portions of that backrest really dialed into your preference, you can start to feel just how different the pelvic support is. But again, don't be concerned when it feels like your back is exhausted. You're just getting used to it, I promise. The softness of the backrest is awesome, but beware of the upholstery you select here. The fabric option makes the backrest feel even softer, but honestly, I melt because it's so hot. When Anthros brought the final production models up to our office, they made sure to include their vegan leather, aka faux leather, and oddly enough, this was a cooler option and eliminated that heat issue I'd experienced with the original upholstery. So if you run cold, you know which one to pick. Now, while I love the upper back pad and how it moves around, I really wish there was more movement in this backrest overall. I like to move around quite a bit and I can feel like it locks you down a bit at times. Now, Ryan in our office has also mentioned that he would like to see some form of height adjustment on that upper back portion to sort of fit his body size better, which I get. And finally, the seat comfort section on the Anthros. Now, if you've made it this far and you're looking for one of the most comfortable seats, this could potentially be it. There is so much I like about it. When you think about where complaints come from with chairs, it's definitely in the seat pad and most specifically, it's almost always in the sit bone region of your behind. Now, Anthros has built something really cool here with their comfort cutouts in the actual cushion. These help to reduce pressure that you would normally feel from the bottom of the seat naturally bottoming out or condensing of that traditional seat pad. But I can confidently say I have never felt like I've bottomed out or created that pressure on my backside where my sit bones are in the Anthros chair. 
They also went a step further, providing that proof with pressure mapping on their seat, showing how little pressure is actually built up in the sit bone region and how there's a better overall distribution of weight across the seat. Now, while the back two thirds of this seat is extremely comfortable, the shape of the front edge of the seat is actually a different story. Now, I can definitely understand why they went this route. Without seat depth adjustment, there was a need to extend the front of the seat pad to accommodate this wide body size or body height. When seated upright in the chair, I honestly don't have any issues. But when I want to get back in that cloud-like feeling in that mid-tilted position, well, the pressure builds and it actually becomes uncomfortable. Now again, much like other aspects of the Anthros chair, they are willing to adapt and change here, which I think is super important, especially in the seat. They've even shared early results of the pressure mapping with their new seat pad designs, and you can see the right leg compared to the left leg. The pressure is almost completely eliminated, or maybe in some cases gone away for some of us. I am so excited to try these new seat cushions. While there are a couple areas I'd like to see improvement on the Anthros chair, if you're someone with bad back pain, neck pain, and share experiences with a lot of the people in the Anthros reviews, then I think the Anthros chair is a really good option right now. Now, if you're someone who's maybe on the fence or maybe don't have a debilitating back condition, you might be able to wait for a couple of these changes that I've requested that are coming. Thanks for watching.